All right, folks, today we're doing the seven-round mock for the New York Jets. We're using the generic background and my see-through shirt because I got a lot of stuff to do and I got no time to do it. If you did not see the first-round mock, what we're doing today, it's a seven-round Jets mock draft, but it's based off of my first-round mock that I did, meaning we're going from there for springboarding off. So any trades that took place in that first-round mock, anything like that, it stays the same. It's not the case for the Jets, but whatever. If you didn't see that, I'll put a link somewhere over in this region. I'll try to remember. Maybe I won't. It's not that hard to find. It should be the last video I did. Um, but that's what we're doing. Seven round mock. Gotta rock and roll. Here we go. With the first pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Trevor Lawrence, quarterback out of Clemson. Look, I talked about it in the last mock, so I don't need to elaborate beyond that. I shouldn't need to elaborate anyways because it just is what it is. Um, I know there was some hemming and hawing for a while about whether or not this was the right pick with Sam Darnold. I was never really a big fan, largely because for teams that are not the Green Bay Packers, I lean on PFF to inform my understanding, and they've never liked him as a quarterback. They like him even less this year. You get a shot at Trevor Lawrence, you look at the gap between him and, and your swing and a miss at Sam Darnold, and I think it's just a pretty obvious pretty obvious situation so new direction I'm actually pretty optimistic about the Jets um, they're gonna have to get some new leadership because obviously the, the way that things are running is just a joke and it's never gonna get fixed if the same decision makers are there I don't know if that's gonna get fixed but they're set up in such a way with with being the number one overall pick right now where this really can turn around quite quickly we're gonna take a stab at it the problem with the draft is you don't have enough picks to satisfy all your needs but again I'm pretty optimistic with the 26th overall pick in the first round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Christian Derisaw, offensive tackle, Virginia Tech. Again, if you saw the last video, you already understand this. I understand you got Mekhi Becton, um, who I like to refer to as Mekhi Becton, um, because it's just awesome. I know that you got the guy, and he's fantastic, and that was a great pick, but for the same reason, we're going to get another one because from what I can see, this offensive line is, is pretty horrible, basically from left guard to right tackle. There might be a couple prospects or, or guys that you look at and say, well, we, we like the way this is headed or when this guy comes back or this or that or whatever, blah, blah, blah. The offensive line needs to get better, and beyond that, when I draft a new quarterback, one of the first things you got to keep in mind is the quarterback, offensive line, wide receiver, tight end, maybe running back if we really want to try to, you know, what, whatever help we can provide, that's exactly what we're going to try to do. So Christian Derisaw with the 26th pick. With the 33rd pick in the second round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Patrick Jones, edge rusher, Pittsburgh. So we're going to go to the other side of the ball quickly. I don't want to completely neglect it. It is a pretty big problem, although we've got some things in place. You know, we got a really pretty solid defensive line. Um, May at safety is pretty solid. we got a couple other things to work on, but one of the things I want to do, although we are getting decent pressure up the middle from uh, Quinnen and uh, even John Franklin Myers, who only has one sack, but his pressures are actually quite high. 29 pressures and 210 attempts is a pretty decent number. So we're getting decent push up the middle, and then you add in Quinnen Williams is uh, doing a decent job against the run. But off the edge, we're not getting quite enough, and you do want to get that edge rusher that's going to get you p potentially those double-digit sacks and whatnot. Um, you look at Jordan Jenkins, for example, decent, but not exactly what we, what we want. Uh, Terrell Basham in the face, 20 pressures and 252 attempts is absolutely horrific. Terrible tackler, um, just not providing much of anything. So, again, if, if we're just kind of looking for big boosts, we got the quarterback, we got another tackle, so now we're solidifying our tackle spots. We're get, we got decent guys up the middle. Now we're going to add some pressure off the edge. Um, kind of just taking big chunks right now and getting some of the bigger pieces while they're available. Not a lot of edge rushers or defensive tackles or anything like that in this class. So we've got a real good one available out of Pittsburgh. Um, he's going to bring some some energy and some nastiness. And hopefully he's going to be that, that true pass rush threat that we really need. With the 65th pick in the third round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select... Tylen Wallace, wide receiver, Oklahoma State. Now, he's been in several of my mocks in the past, um, having been a potential first-round pick. Obviously, he has fallen quite a bit as far as the ranks go now, going 65th to the Jets. But I think this is something that Jets fans want, probably a little bit more than I do. I understand you don't really have that true elite number one. Maybe Denzel Mims can get to that place. I don't think he is right now. Beyond all that, though, we got Chris Hogan, Brashad Perriman. Those guys are going to probably be gone after this year. 
Um, then you've also got uh, Jamison Crowder, Josh Doxson, Braxton Berrios, who are in the final years of their contracts. So we're looking at Denzel Mims, and and you know obviously some of these guys maybe get re-signed or whatever. But there's nobody really outside of Mims that's a for sure long-term investment. Um, so I want to get somebody, and it's always nice to pair with an incoming uh, quarterback, a wide receiver. So we've got we've got a couple young guys to build around, um, but it's just it's not good enough. We don't have enough people. We don't have enough youth. So it, it just kind of makes sense all around. And I, I don't really want to go much further than the third round without getting a wide receiver. So Tylen Wallace out of Oklahoma State. With the 91st pick in the third round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Cameron McGrone, linebacker, Michigan. I know you got C.J. Mosley. I didn't forget about him. And, yes, he is going to be locked up for some time. He's also going to be 29 years old. Outside of that, I'm not seeing a lot of production from our linebackers. Obviously, without him, it's just an absolute nightmare. But we also haven't even really invested in uh, a lot. We've got, what, Blake Cashman in the fifth round of 2019. So we haven't really done much other than paying a boatload of money to C.J. Mosley. And I'm not going to overly critique that. That when he's playing, he's a good football player. But um, at 29 years old, trusting that he's going to be the lone solution now, we're going to bring in this guy. Um, he's going to bring us a little bit more versatility, a little bit more youth, kind of pass the torch when this eventually does end with C.J. Mosley, which might be uh, sooner than you think, depending on how good he comes back in year 29 coming off of his injury. So uh, with the 91st pick, the Jets select Cameron McGrone out of Michigan. With the 97th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Landon Dickerson, offensive center, Alabama. So usually when I'm drafting interior, it's just interior. Um, but it, the the statement that we need to get better on the interior is true. The, the team is basically comprised mostly of tackles, and I'm guessing they, they believe or hope, uh, similar to several teams, that if in a pinch we can take some of these tackles, we can kick them inside. But as far as actual investment on the interior of the offensive line, we haven't done anything in a very long time. We've got, what, a third-round pick in 2017 in Pat Elfline, uh, which I don't think we even selected Pat. Uh, so that was just us picking him up, and he's not a very good football player anyway, so it doesn't even matter. we got to do something because, and I've talked about this with several other teams, and I bang this drum over and over again, and you're probably tired of hearing me say it if you watch a lot of my videos, but the underappreciation for offensive line is kind of sickening to me. And granted, you occasionally have cases like Russell Wilson who can run around like a crazy person and it doesn't affect him as much. But you also look at teams like Dallas who are extremely dominant and then their offensive line starts to erode and things fall apart. I mean, it just you can't let that erode, especially now that we have an investment in a quarterback. We've got a great left tackle. We hopefully have a really good right tackle, but our interior offensive line is terrible. We're not investing in it. So we're going to take a swing right here with Landon Dickerson out of Alabama. With the 129th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Cade Mays, offensive guard, Tennessee. Same philosophy, but also keep in mind, it's not only that I'm really trying to bang on this and beat on this, we're also back of the, well, not back of, but we're in the fourth and fifth round, so you can't necessarily assume these are plug-and-play starters day one and they're going to be pro bowlers for the rest of their lives. If we get one really good starter and a quality backup out of Landon Dickerson and Cade Mays, we're going to call that a success at this point. You don't really want much less than that. You hope one of these guys can start, especially considering the lacking of quality at the offensive line as it is. They should be able to overcome at least what those guys are doing. But um, that's sort of where we're at right now. If we get two starters, great. Right now we're looking for a starter and a quality backup to help improve the, the overall quality of this offensive line. With the 147th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Spencer Brown, running back, Northern Iowa. Um, I know we've already got some investment in this right now. Uh, Michael Pirine is considered kind of the guy, but he's not doing much for us. Frank Gore is 700 years old. Le'Veon Bell is now a chief. So again, we're, we're getting to the later part of the draft where it, it becomes less and less likely. We don't want to lean on things that we can't be without but we do want to take another swing at this especially with uh, our number one running back not going to be around for very much longer um, at least to give us another option he's 5'11 228 pounds so he's kind of built if need be if it does pan out and again, we're only in the fifth round there are some really good fifth round running backs in the NFL right now so it's not a guarantee that he can't do anything but I, I want to take a swing at a guy that's got the build of somebody that can be an every down back if he does pan out as opposed to these sort of you know, five foot nine, 
72 pound scat backs right so spencer brown is going to come in he's going to give us the potential of being another guy if nothing else maybe being a rotational player but we got to take some swings at running back and we're going to take a swing at spencer brown running back out of northern iowa finally with the 218th pick in the 2021 nfl draft seventh round the new york jets select elijah griffin cornerback out of usc the cornerback play is not only subpar outside of possibly pool but as i'm looking at it the lack of investment and i'm not fixing that by waiting until the seventh round and i'm you know i deserve to get punched in the face as much as your current gm does apparently because this is kind of abysmal we've got undrafted free agents in 2020 uh, we've got one fifth round pick, one sixth round pick in 2019, which was Blasson Austin. Bryce Hall, the fifth round pick in 2020, is is not even contributing all that much, nor is he playing very well, which, as you would expect from a fifth round pick. I mean, something's got to something's got to give here. Um, possibly looking at free agency. We got to do something. Uh, again, I'm taking a swing. I'm at least trying to do something, but I'm not fixing the problem of where's the first, second, third round pick and cornerback. I mean. At this point, as critical of a position as it is, something big has to happen here, and this just is not good enough. So clearly the plan moving forward, if we haven't addressed it already, is to go out in free agency and find a cornerback because this is not good enough. And I think now that we have the team that we have, we've got a solid offensive line, um, good enough running back, quarterback, wide receivers that are good enough. Hopefully Mims takes another step. Um, the defensive line, we get C.J. Mosley back. We got May at safety. The, the one difference between we might actually have a shot at doing something here if, if the stars align and actually taking a push and actually trying to win games for our fans that are abandoning us at this point, rightly so, the one thing that stands out as we just can't win with things being this bad is corner. You have to have quality corners or, or you're going to be dead last in yards allowed through the air and you're going to lose. So we're going to have to take some swings. And, and granted, you know, again, Poole is not a bad football player. He's actually pretty solid, and kudos to him. Um, I know he's on, on IR right now, but, you know, when he comes back, hopefully he can continue. It's been two years in a row that he's actually showed out quite well. Let me check real quick just to make sure he's not going anywhere. He is. He's, he's actually a free agent after this year. I would suggest we re-sign him because he's the only quality guy on here. we got to re-sign a couple people, including Marcus May, who I've been bragging about and whatnot, but whatever, right? Um... I really genuinely believe, and again, this is just year one of a rebuild. I genuinely believe, you know, we got to get rid of Frank Gore. We got to get rid of Sam Darnold. Joe Flacco is going to be going, going bye-bye and all that kind of stuff. Um, Rashad Perriman, we're going to start over with the wide receivers. But I really think that this goes from a pathetic team that can't win a single game to, I mean, depending on the, the ceiling of our quarterback, and at least an 8-8 eight and eight team, right? There's going to be some tough competition even within the division, but... Um, this, this, this is a massive shift in my mind. So anyways, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you like and subscribe if you want to check out more of our videos. Again, if you haven't seen the first round mock, you might want to go back and watch that. Planning on doing something like this just about every week if I can keep it together. Just had a baby and all that stuff, so I've been absent for a while, but I'm... I'm I'm making a pretty hard push as we get through this, so I appreciate your support. Please leave any comments or questions in the comment section. I will be sure to review that and do a better job on the mock draft next time. Take care.